Welcome everybody. We are here. It is finally time for Victory Road Circuit once more with Spring Series actually this time around. This weekend it is going to be top 16 going into the Grand Finals of tomorrow. I myself am Costa joined by Mr. Jamie Boyd himself. How are we doing Hello, Jamie? Hello Costa. I'm doing brilliantly. Really looking forward to this Spring Series Grand Finals. We had such an explosive finish to the Winter Series and I'm really excited to see what's going to be coming out of this Spring Series Spring Series Finals as well. Oh, exactly. No doubt. Um, <laughs> to be expected, uh, probably more um, explosive action that we are going to be going ahead and tuning into today. And uh, talking about that, we're going to go ahead, pop the screen up just so you can see for yourselves as well. Um, the top 16, essentially the bracket of it, uh, who is going to be going up against who as uh, we are going to be seeing from the starting from the left hand side, we're going to be seeing Damiano La Barbera versus Yuki Zaninovic. Um, Damiano, we did actually see in uh, one of the previous Victory Road streams as well, so uh, not a stranger at all. Uh, another very explosive <laughs> match, definitely explosive one, uh, in between Alex Gomez versus Marco Silva, Victor Medina versus Kevin Salveto, which was our previous Winter Series champion. Uh, Simone San Vito, very, very good player there, very well experienced against Giuseppe Alario, so, oh my lord, very experienced players, just from the left-hand side even before going to the right. Yeah, and on the other side of the bracket, we're going to be having Carl Geffner versus William Tansley. Definitely making a comeback where William Tansley has been uh, out of the scene for a couple of years, but definitely making a mm -hmm. comeback in this uh, grand finals of the Spring Series. We're going to be having Francesco Perro versus Max Gill. We're going to have G uh, Giulio Tarlo uh, versus Francesco Diana and Orlando Luna versus Bing Ji Wang. So, I mean, <laughs> I can see so many good matchups that we're just going to be seeing only from today. As, uh, don't forget, ladies and gents, all top 16 matches will be featured today. Eight matches in a row, of course, once all the players are set up. And this is the schedule for today. The timings are going to be rough timings, of course. Don't expect exact estimate ones because this is still live. This is not pre-recorded. Um, all of the players still do have to set up and go up against each other, but, uh, um, yeah, we're just going to go straight into the action between Orlando versus Bingy uh, starting up right now. So, it, very exciting. I'm very excited. Um, as we do know, of course, that Bingy is a very well-versed player with um, actually some really strong archetypal teams that kind of stay and last in the meta, don't they? Yeah, and he also brings some quite niche picks as well. He was very successful with the Blastoise back in Series 7, uh, very similar to what Series 9 is currently. Uh, also bring that Turtonator to the finals of one of the qualifiers as well, a very unique pick, really finding that niche for that Turtonator. A Pokemon we haven't really seen uh, do too much as well, uh, but really coming in with that Iron Defense Body Press set. So really looking forward to what he's going to be bringing, as well as what Orlando is going to be bringing to this set. Exactly. And uh, what we are going to be doing is actually something new uh, that we haven't done in previous streams. We're going to be going ahead and uh, essentially setting up polls for you, uh, the viewers, of course, at home to go ahead and choose who you think will be the winner of this match. We're just going to go ahead and in just around 5, 10 seconds, get that going. So please don't miss out. It's only going to be up for 10, 15, 20 seconds. V go ahead, exclamation mark Orlando or exclamation mark Benji to see who will go ahead and win and try to get some very nice tasty victory road points yeah, so when you see this poll come up on the screen, that means that the poll will be live for you to go and vote. So please go and choose who you think is going to be taking this set between Orlando and Bingy. And it looks like it's, it's pushing towards Orlando, oh, Orlando oh. at this point. So um, very, very interesting push there. And no, Bingy seems to be responding. So yeah, it's, <laughs> I love it's, it. <laughs> going back to a fairly even split between the two. So so yeah, chat seems to be very divided between their, their support between Orlando and Bingy. So this is definitely going to be a good match to see. Exactly. This is what we want to see, especially from you, chat. As um, we're going to go straight into the match as well. I do believe that um, both players are set up right now. They're just waiting for the go-ahead as uh, we are going to be going and tuning straight into their achievements, their kind of player profiles. As we're going to be starting off with Orlando Luna. Um, he actually came in with the 11th seed. Remember, to actually reach this stage, you needed to get uh, a set amount of points uh, in the standings over... Um, 
a, a few, uh, r sorry, apologies, a huge range of actual five qualifier setups, which were featured every single weekend. He was the runner-up in the first qualifier of this spring qualifier uh, section, the actual event, and he's also gotten top 12 in the third Players Cup Global Finals. So more of a newer player, but something uh, very uh, underdog, whilst also uh, really good to see in this player is that he's just trying to do the best that he can. He's, from what it looks like, on form, and he's even bringing that colossal Dragapult um, mode, escorted with a Toad Kiss, which I don't usually uh, think we see as uh, common. Yeah, we haven't seen the Toki SP paired on Colossal uh, since the Players Cup 1, which was quite a few series ago at this point, but Colossal, a very tried and true archetype uh, going into this, so Orlando's going to be putting his faith behind that Colossal, and Bingji, we're going to have to have a look at his team now whether he's going to bring one of those turtles that he's well known for at this point, but unfortunately Ooh. it doesn't look like we see any turtles over there on that side of the field. Uh, but some good achievements there, uh, being able to get top six in the second Players' Cup uh, Global Finals, so a very good achievement there. Able to get runner-up in two regional championships back in 2020 in the early series uh, of VGC20, and also managed to w winning a grassroots Chinese tournament, uh, becoming the champion of that tournament there. Uh, but some some interesting picks coming out from Bingji here. The Sylvia is something we don't see too often. Usually players mm. do opt for that Togekiss instead to try and get that redirection support, but Sylveon definitely has some things that it can do a little bit better than Togekiss can, so um, it's definitely yeah. going to be interesting to see how that Sylveon's going to, to come out here. Also, the Mamoswine usually picks as kind of an anti-meta pick, so uh, maybe Bingy mm -hmm. trying to counter some things that he expects to see. Uh, could potentially do well against that Colossal with that, with that Mamoswine. As we are going to be going ahead and checking out team preview of both these trainers. Additionally, uh, of course, like last time, we will be including the webcams of those players so you can go ahead and try to see the flurry of emotions coming up from both these trainers. Uh, so, how are we feeling about the current matchup right now, um, Jamie? Because uh, Orlando obviously does have that uh, colossal dragapult mode with the Toad Kiss, actually. But Benji has to try to navigate maybe around that with certain ones on his side with the Mammoth Swine, it seems actually quite interesting and good matchup in a way. Yeah, you always have to be wary of that Colossal lead. If you lead poorly into a Colossal setup, the Colossal could easily just get that weakness policy activated, get that steam engine going, and just sweep through the team. So you always have to be prepared for that, but then you always have to, um, when you're the Colossal player, you have to expect what the counters to Colossal are going to be, and prepare accordingly to that. The Mammoth Swine would definitely be Bingy's best answer to the Colossal, but at the same time, you've got that Rillaboom, you've got that Urshifu, both of them can do very well against that Mammoth Swine, uh, with, the, with the Grassy Glides and the Surging Strikes, and we did just see the, the focus Ash on that Mammoth Swine, so the, the mm -hmm. Urshifu could just straight up knock out that Mammoth Swine in one hit because of those three hits from the Surging Strikes. Oh, and we're going to be seeing Bingy going ahead and leading with a Sylveon Regieleki, double shiny, because why not? And over on Orlando's side, that Dragapult Colossal mode is now on the field. So not opting to lead with the Mammoth Swine there for Bingji, uh, relying on that Regieleki and Sylveon. Two Pokemon that don't seem like they match up too well into the Colossal, but the key thing is that the mm -hmm. Regieleki does outspeed the Dragapult, so it would be able to get off and attack before the Dragapult was able to go for the Surf to activate the Weakness Policy and the Steam Engine of the Colossal. So if the Regieleki can do enough to be able to stop either the Dragapult from going for the Surf, or enough damage to the Colossal where it won't be able to get the Surf uh, activation of its Weakness Policy, uh, then mm -hmm. it would be able to stop that Colossal. So you do have have to be wary uh, if you're Orlando. You're not facing down any uh, normal counters to that Colossal in the ground and the water type, so you do have to be wary of what Bingy's plan here is going to be to try and stop that Colossal. Well, exactly, because in this situation, you want to try to focus down on the Dragapult, but then, actually, the Dragapult's going to be switching out from Orlando's side for the Rillaboom coming in. It will be bringing its ability and the Grass Terrain now onto the field as well, trying to get maybe any potential Grassy Glide priorities on the other side, but wait, there's going to be a Dynamax from Binji's side, and if this is the Regieleki, uh, we could be seeing an Electric Terrain being set up at the end of the turn. Yeah, if it's going for that Max Lightning and it is the Regieleki, it will be overwriting that Grass Terrain immediately, and we'll be starting to boost up the power of that Regieleki uh, with its Max, Light Max Lightnings. Could potentially do a lot of damage to this Colossal here, and it looks like it is going to be going for the Gigantamax on the turn one, not going for any of the water setup to try and activate that weakness policy, or the Steam Engine, just content to go for that Gigantamax immediately. 
So Orlando might be trying to just opt for that residual damage over time dealt by the G-Max Voltalift. This Colossal, this G-Max Colossal's signature move, wanting to try to weaken down Benji's Pokemon over time, but we're going to be seeing a helping hand, Jamie, from this Sylveon. Oh, and just a very safe Max Guard coming out from the Colossal will be able to successfully block the Max Lightning and keep, uh, in turn, the grassy terrain on the field. Yeah, so Rillaboom will still have access to that priority in the Grassy Glides uh, now that it did keep the Grassy Terrain on the field. But cycling in maybe to go for a fake out, uh, but not be able to fake out that Ra Dynamax Regieleki. Uh, something that we have been seeing pick up a lot going for the Dynamax on the Regieleki. That helping hands with the Regieleki would be doing a lot of damage to that Colossal. It doesn't have its mm -hmm. Steam Engine activated, so the Regieleki is still going to be able to move first before that Colossal again. Uh, grassy Glide probably not going to be enough into that Regieleki thanks to it going for the Dynamax. So really, Bingy does have the option of just going for that helping hand max lightning once again uh, if he feels comfortable just attacking into that colossal it would overwrite the grassy terrain again uh, so that it wouldn't have any more priority for that grassy glide oh my lord turn two after one turn g max colossal is just instantly brutally switched out right now from orlando he wants to go ahead and pivot right now and gain that momentum of the one move going into that slot helping hand from the sylveon goes into the regieleki grassy glide deals so much damage onto the sylveon and max lightning does come out in turn into the urshifu slot and will be bringing it down to its one and final hp regardless of that critical hit of course because of its focus sash yeah, maybe a little bit of overkill there with them helping hand to bring that Urshifu down to its focus sash, but could have been doing a lot of damage to that Colossal. We've seen the Life Orb as well from the Regieleki, an item that has definitely been picking up on Regielekis as of late, so that you can get the most amount of damage out from your Max Lightnings, and could have potentially, with that helping hand boost, picked up the knockout even on the Dynamax Colossal, mm -hmm. and it looks like Orlando uh, saw into that, switched out his Colossal, but that is the Dynamax gone from Orlando's side, just used a Max Guard to preserve the Colossal. Uh, still does yeah. have access to the Weakness Policy, though so if Orlando can somehow position himself to get the uh, foot into position where it can aggregate or the Dragapult to be able to still surf there is still the mm -hmm. option of setting up that Colossal just without the Dynamax anymore but now the, the Max Lightning went off it did override that grassy terrain so the electric terrain is up this turn that means the, the grassy glides will not have any more priority and the Regieleki is effectively free to do whatever it wants this turn Wow, as we are going to go ahead and see the Urshifu try to go for that protector. Doesn't want to get uh, chipped off uh, by any sort of quick attack from maybe the Sylveon. But no, Max Lightning wants to make sure it picks up that KO. Gets rid of that option of the priority side Aqua Jet onto the Colossal later on in this game. It does go down in consequence of that. As right now, we just see a U-turn from that Rillaboom. It's going to be able to do some very decent damage onto the Regieleki. But more importantly, it's going to be allowing... Orlando that pivot to go ahead and bring another Pokemon in its uh, stead whilst also maybe even bringing the Rillaboom in at the end of the turn for fake out pressure also to overwrite the electric terrain again now the Regieleki has done all its three uh, max moves Max Lightning can't Ooh. go up again Hyper Voice not really doing too much damage to that resisted uh, Colossal there but if the Rillaboom does switch back in now it would overwrite that terrain Spingy doesn't have any options to change the terrain back anymore the uh, Regieleki has taken a lot of damage at this point most likely going to be in that Grassy Glide KO range uh, so really could just pick up that Regieleki and then the Sylveon is not doing too much damage to this Colossal uh, even though it can't go for its Gigantamax anymore it would still be able to take on the Sylveon pretty well well, uh, but yeah, the, the Dynamax pretty useful there for the, the Regieleki there, being able to take out that Urshifu, taking out one of the options for the Dynamax, uh, for the uh, side Aqua Jets, uh, facing yeah. off the Steam Engine, but also effectively wasting the Dynamax of the Colossal. Even though it didn't actually hit a Dynamax Colossal with the Max Lightning, it still used mm -hmm. it up by forcing the Max Guard, forcing the switch out as well. So uh, quite a nice use of that Regieleki. A little bit overkill going for the Helping Hand Max Lightning into an Urshifu, and then just that Max Lightning to do that one extra damage, but being able to KO through mm -hmm. Protect very crucial there taking out one of the options to activate that colossal now orlando only has that dragapult that could go for the surf as the colossal is going to be going for a protect right now on orlando's side he wants to maybe try to make sure that it's still on the field whilst the dragapult comes in as grusty glide goes into the sylveon does good damage but rising voltage goes into the protect we see a yawn doubles up into the colossal slot actually so orlando is still able to um be in a good spot essentially because even though he did waste dynamax he was able to play his switches quite smartly 
end. So that was a very good protect out coming out there from the Colossal Gang. Some nice chip onto that Sylveon. Uh, not opting to go for the Grassy Glide to pick up the KO on the Reggie Elect at this point. It does have Rising Voltage as its choice of attacking move, which isn't as mm -hmm. powerful now that the Grassy Drain is up. Grassy Glide goes ahead and picks up the KO onto the Regieleki. Benji opting not to go for the Protect there as the Yawn comes out from the Sylveon now. Goes into the Colossal slot. It will be going to sleep the next turn if it is still on the field. Whilst a very uh, weak Heat Wave, I say weak, and it gets punished with a Burn Infliction onto the Sylveon, which will essentially be um, uh, negating the Grass Terrain recovery over on Benji's side, at least for this turn. Bring the Sylveon down to below half HP as well at this point. So maybe starting to get in range of that Grassy Glide coming out from the Rillaboom. And the Heat Wave not doing too much damage and will be useful against this Celesteela that's just come in. But there is no uh, activation of the Steam Engine yet from the Colossal. The Celesteela is most likely going to outspeed this Colossal. Uh, does usually carry something like a Meteor Beam, but you do need to uh, have that turn of activation for the Meteor Beam. But the Celesteela here is going to be carrying that Power Hub so it can get that immediate turn of activation. Mm -hmm. So it can be threatening this Colossal down very heavily. But then if you do that Meteor Beam Power Herb turn into a Protect of the Colossal, you need to take two turns in the future. So Bingy's going to have to be very careful of that activation of the Meteor Beam. Yep. Uh, if he does attack into the Protect of the Colossal, that could be the opening that Orlando needs to be able to try and get that set up with the, with the Colossal because the Celestia won't be able to attack it too much uh, anymore. But it does have that Yawn as well. So may have to switch out to be able to get that Dragapult in, try and reposition so he can finally get that Surf off. And the Colossal is going to be switching out. It's not trying to risk the second Protect, but this leaves Dragapult open to a Media Beam Power Herb KO, potentially, as yes, Benji is opting to go just for that right now. We are going to be seeing it charge up right now. It's normal first turn, but because of the Power Herb, it goes ahead, it gets the special attack boost whilst being able to inflict damage right now onto Orlando's side. Look at that amazing animation and oh, wow. the KO. Critical hit yeah, potentially not enough to pick up the, that, that Dragapult even with w without the critical hit, so may it be necessary there, but gives the Celesteela a special attack boost in the Beast Boost rather than the Sylveon taking it out with that Hyper Voice, and Riddaboom's just going to be getting out there once again with that U-turn. Is really rough right there for Orlando, if that did, of course, matter. As the U-turn, like you said, Jamie, is going to be pivoting out now for the Colossal. I think Orlando's, at this point, he's just saying, I need to keep this Colossal alive. It is my win con at this point. Hyper Voice, uh, because, of course, it is a Fairy type, and Fire types uh, do actually resist Fairy type moves. We are going to be seeing the Colossal not take as much damage, even though Sylveon is a very good special offensive threat, especially as that Hyper Voice is powered by its Pixel like ability. Yeah, and the Meteor Beam, uh, the Power Herb has been used up now, so Meteor Beam would take two turns. But at this point, because the Celesteela was able to actually pick up the knockout on that Dragapult, mm -hmm. it did get a special attack boost from the Beast Boost as well as that Meteor Beam charging turn. So it is at plus two stages of special attack. May not even need that Meteor Beam anymore. Staring down the Rillaboom, you could just go for an Air Slash, most likely enough to pick up the knockout on that Rillaboom at this point with the increased stages of special attack. And then Flash Cannon is just going to be a neutral hit onto that Colossal, so still can just rely on that at this point. Maybe not needing Meteor Beam anymore and the Sylveon could get a little bit of a boost to that Celesteela if it wanted with that helping hand potential as well but just a fake out here into that Celesteela yeah, Celestina is going to be flinching right now. It cannot move. We do see that it was going to move before the Colossal, as the Colossal goes for the Heat Wave, but it actually misses on the Sylveon, which can be a, quite important as the Burn maybe was trying to, would be able to do something about it there, but we are going to be seeing the Yawn come out from the Sylveon now. It is essentially Benji wearing down Orlando's resources. Orlando only has two Pokemon left. Benji has a third one in the back, so he is definitely in the driving seat. Yeah, the Rillaboom can't, can't switch out anymore. Even if it goes for that U-turn, it will be going to sleep at the end of this turn. And the Celestia did take a nice chunk of damage from that Heat Wave, but because it resists that Grassy Glide so well, really not going to be in range of that. So the Celestia most likely going to outspeed this Colossal at this point uh, because of no Steam Engine, and will have just free reign of whatever it wants to do here. And Sylveon is going to be helping out that damage output. Definitely is as Celestila is going to be hoping to move first, but it has to wait for Rillaboom as the Rillaboom goes for the Grasses Glide, does pick off the KO onto the Sylveon. So um, the Colossal is going to be hoping to survive this right now. This is at plus two, I think, and it cannot actually survive the neutral damaging flash cannon right there. Celestila proving why it is such a beast. It is now at plus three of its special attack. This Rillaboom has been put to sleep, and this seems to be game one going for Benji. Wine.
Yeah, at least the uh, Orlando gets to see what Bingy's last Pokemon is going to be here. So uh, potentially going to be that Mamoswine because he was facing down a Colossal, but it's actually going to be the Rillaboom. So Bingy did not bring any any expected counters to the Colossal. No water types, no ground types, but it wasn't actually necessary at all here. It seems like the Regieleki wow. was putting on enough pressure that he didn't actually opt to go for that Mamoswine. Uh, but the Rillaboom here on Orlando's side is going to be asleep. You do have that Celestia at three stages of special attack at this point. Uh, could just go for any attack and really really do a lot of damage to this Rillaboom. And it seems like Orlando knows that and is going to be forfeiting this game one. He is, as he's just going to be going ahead and just say, listen, I need to try to maybe change my game plan right there. My G-Max uh, basically was just used up. It was only there for a max guard, and he wasn't even able to go ahead and get that very, very important G-Max Voltalith that just would have been able to wear down Benji's Pokemon in time. But more importantly, there's just no proc situation for the Colossal there for the weakness policy and the Steam Engine. So he's going to really have to change it up going into game two. Yeah, Dragapult doesn't seem to be the one to be able to activate that steam engine but the regieleki putting on so much pressure with its dynamax with that helping hand boost as well going to be doing so much damage with that max lightning may be enough to pick up the knockout on the colossal may even be enough to pick up the knockout on that dragapult even though it is mm -hmm. a resisted hit because it is so strong and dragapult is not known to be the most offensive of pokemon and we can see it's got the life orb as well as its item so probably going to be a more offensive one as well so uh, orlando yeah. probably does need to change up his game plan here dragapult won't be able to activate that steam engine because the regieleki will be able to get that helping hand max lightning first but if he does opt for that urshifu instead of the dragapult that's going to out prioritize any attack that the regieleki would want to go for and that would mm -hmm. activate the steam engine of the colossal so urshifu could potentially be an adjustment that orlando could go in with this but then at the same time if bingy reads into that he does have two pokemon that do have access to fake out so if he leads yeah. them along with the regieleki you'd still be able to fake out the urshifu to be able to put a stop to the aqua jet on the first turn which could be enough of an opening so that the regieleki could then attack the Urshifu or the Colossal with its Max Lightning first and doing too much damage to get that activation. So it's going to be interesting to see what Orlando does opt to um, do for his adjustment here, but whether Bingy is able to read into that as well, because an Urshifu Colossal lead into a Sylveon Regieleki could be devastating mm -hmm. for Bingy because he would have no way of stopping the activation of the Steam Engine. That would put the Colossal then faster than the Regieleki. So it'll be interesting to see Jamie. if there's any adjustments coming from both sides. I was going to say, would you say then that Orlando's main fear was the fake out pressure and not leading? Oh, that's why essentially he led the Dragapult game one and didn't actually opt to lead the Urshifu straight away. Most likely, you would be expecting, uh, most people would be leading their ground types or their water types into a Colossal. So maybe expecting the Mamoswine to come out uh, from Bingy's side of the field. And then the, mm -hmm. the Dragapult would be able to go for a surf in the face of that Mamoswine. Uh, but Urshifu as well would be able to go for those surging strikes into the Mamoswine. So I do expect to see an Urshifu coming out from, from Orlando's side of the field. It does have a much better time of activating that steam engine than the Dragapult can yeah. do in the face of that Regieleki. All right, and here we go, ladies and gents. Get ready. Game two, Bingy one, Orlando zero. Same lead coming out from Bingy inside Regilecki and that Sylveon. And we do see the change up on Orlando's side, actually opting to go for the priority Aqua Jet in the shape and form of that Rapid Strike Urshifu. Doesn't look like there's any ways for Bingy to stop that. So if Orlando does opt to go for that Saigon Aqua Jet, he will be getting that weakness policy. He will be getting that steam engine. Mm -hmm. Then he'll have to prioritize whether he wants to take out that Regieleki with the with the Max Volcolith or maybe um, a Max Flare. Um, to try and to just take out that Dynamax Pokemon if Bingy does go for that Dynamax because it could still yeah. go for the Helping Hand Max Lightning to KO the Colossal. But at the same time, the Sylveon does still have access to Yawn. You could be going for a Yawn into that Colossal and just accept that it's going to get activated. But then in two turns, yeah. it's going to to be put to sleep so orlando exactly. does have a choice here he's most likely going to be going for the aqua jet into his own colossal there's no real way that bingy can stop it but then he has to choose does he try and take out the regieleki that could be going for a dynamax which doesn't look like it's going for this turn as that is orlando going for the oh. dynamax this turn and regieleki would have been dynamaxing first or does he try and put a stop to that yawn potential from the sylveon if the colossal is even able to ko sylveon is a very specially defensive pokemon could shrug off exactly. that gmax volcano to try and get that yawn into the colossal and let's find out, uh, as Benji did not go for the Dynamax, he wants to hold on that and go for the Protect instead. If there is a Yawn play right now, he still can't Dynamax the next turn as the Max Lightning would negate the Yawn status sleep effect. As we do see Aqua Jet coming out, goes into the Colossal on its side. Procs the Steam Engine, accompanied by a very sweet um, uh, weakness policy proc, plus two of its special attack and physical attack. And we do see the G-Max Voltalith come out right now. Who will it be targeting? Goes into the Red 
Angeliki deals so much damage, even behind the Protect right there, dealing more than half of its HP worth, including the Vaultlith residual damage over time immediately after as the Yawn will be coming out from the Sylveon and does target that um, Colossal slot. So even if uh, now that Benji's been able to get the Yawn off, he can't go for the Max Lightning with the Regilecki, definitely not at that HP range of that uh, Regilecki too. Yeah, definitely not going to be going for that Max Lightning, especially because the Colossal most likely outspeeds the Regilecki and can get that attack off first. But definitely a much better start for Orlando this time. He wasn't able to make use of any of his Dynamax turns in the last match. He'll be able to make use of two of them in this game. He has sacrificed the third one because he did take that Yawn. But two, generally, Colossal, you only need one turn to get that Volklith up, and then it's doing so much residual damage. So two turns could easily be enough for Orlando here. Here we go, the KO onto the Regilecki from that Aqua Jet of the Urshifu. So uh, now there's going to be a very free targeting into the Sylveon with this G-Max Voltalith at plus two. Oh my lord, it nearly picks up the KO, but that shows to show the testament of how much bulk this Sylveon does have in special defense, as it's actually not even able to pick up a KO onto the Urshifu. And because of the G-Max Voltalith residual damage, it goes down this turn, even if at the cost of the colossal now being put to sleep yeah so taking up the lead that bingji went with last time much quicker for orlando this time but bingji did not go for a dynamax with the Re reggie lecky still does have access to his dynamax rosella steeler is a very good candidate for that dynamax and most likely going to be that rillaboom once again uh, that we saw in that game one which could easily go for the dynamax as well if it does carry the high horsepower that it so commonly does could go for the dynamax option to try and get some max quakes going into that colossal as well because he does have a guaranteed hit into this colossal if he wants it whether that's going to be a meteor beam uh, power herb or just a max rock fall at this point uh, you do want to try and dy maybe dynamax one of your pokemon so you're taking less damage from the surging strikes but at the same time mm -hmm. rillaboom could just go for the grassy glide into the urshifu uh, here and then just power up that celestia with this guaranteed turn to, with the meteor beam but it looks like the colossal is just going to sacrifice its dynamax that it couldn't have made use of anyway and just switch out Oh my lord, it is going to be switching out, but at what cost? The Rillaboom's going to be coming in right now. Ooh, double switch from Orlando's side, wanting to absolutely change it up. Uh, he does actually bring the Incineroar this game. He will be getting that Intimidate uh, attack drop off onto that Rillaboom, being able to bring it down to minus one. As the Celesteela, no Dynamax from Benji's side. Grassy Glide comes out, goes into the Incineroar slot. Well played from Orlando, but wait, where is this Meteor Beam going? That is why Benji didn't opt to go for the Dynamax. He wants to get the plus one special attack boost. Does he target down that incineral slot and maybe even run away with this game? Let's find out as it's going to be going ahead. The animation goes and it actually goes into the Rillaboom slot. Doesn't even bring it down to half of its HP's worth as it is going to be able to recover a bit of uh, the grassy terrain HP recovery. But um, Benji, more importantly, Jamie, he's got his plus one in special attack for his Celesteela. Now would be a very good time to go for that Dynamax with the Celesteela, and now getting that boost in the special attack could be enough to take out that Incineroar with a max Rockfall at this point. Definitely enough to take out the Rillaboom with a max Airstream, or even a max Steel Strike Spike to try and get the defenses raised of the Celesteela so it can take on that Incineroar a lot better. And this Colossal in the back is going to have at least a guaranteed sleep turn, so it doesn't have to worry too much about that Colossal uh, in the back. Just mm -hmm. needs to take care of this Incineroar with the Celesteela. If you go for that max Rockfall and are able to KO that Incineroar with the max Rockfall, that's going to be the main threat to that Celestia at this point taken care of so a uh, really nice meteor beam there not going for the dynamax getting set up with your Celestia so it can do the most amount of damage it can do uh, even though Bingy is down to his last two pokemon Celestia is looking in a really really good position it's got it set up it's going to have three turns of dynamax available if Bingy chooses to go yep. for the dynamax option with that Celestia and it looks like he is dynamaxing at least one of them most likely that Celestia could be going on a rampage here here we go. Benji has set the scene for his Celesteela. Look at it go. Gaining its gargantuan uh, Dynamax form, threatening so much damage and uh, potential even more beast boost uh, accompanied by those KOs as we are going to be seeing the Protect actually from the Rillaboom just wanting to play it a bit safe with Rillaboom whilst the Dynamax goes out as indeed the fake out from the Rillaboom on Orlando's side was trying to target down Benji's Rillaboom and Max Rock
Dark Fall is going to be coming out from the Sunday Sea. Now, is down the Incineral, picks up the KO, gifts itself a now plus two in special attack, as well as sets up the sand. And this is looking very tough right now for Orlando uh, because this is so, so difficult, given the fact that that, Celest that uh, Colossal is still in the back and it is now still asleep. Yeah, it's guaranteed to stay asleep, so Bingy can just fire off whatever max move he wants into that Colossal. Uh, whether that's a Steel Spike to try and get your defences up, which probably is unnecessary at this point, considering the Urshifu can just crit straight through it. Uh, or just go for the max Rockfall with the increased special attack. Uh, even with the Sandstorm up, we're giving that special defence boost to the Colossal, most likely going to be enough to pick up the KO at this point. So this Celestia mm -hmm. is in just a fantastic position. Uh, could just get go for the Airstream on either the Urshifu or the Rillaboom to pick up and knock out all the max Rockfall on the Colossal. It looks like it's going to be the Colossal coming in here, but it is guaranteed to stay asleep at this point. And the Urshifu's on such low HP that if Orlando is bringing yeah. that Colossal to try and cycle out back into the Urshifu, uh, then it, the Urshifu's still going to be in range of that Max Rockfall. And if you do go for that as well, you're still going to take the guaranteed sleep turn at <coughs> some point with the Colossal. And it looks like there's no way to break through the Celesteela for Orlando. He is going to forfeit, and Bingy is going to be taking this at 2-0. Yeah, I think it's just that positioning, Jamie. Benji knew what he had to do. He was okay with letting Reggie Alecki go. He was very well aware that the Celesteela is key. Going ahead, getting that yawn off like he expertly did onto that Colossal through his, the use of that Sylveon. Just ran away with the game. Sure, Orlando, get your residual damage over time da uh, set up essentially with a GMAX Voltolith, but I could just put it to sleep, slow play it, and then try to sweep with the Celestina, and that's exactly what he did. And it's really interesting to see uh, a, lot of, a lot of players do opt to go for a uh, water Pokemon or a ground type Pokemon as the lead. Try and KO that Colossal as soon as you can. But the Mammoth Swine was the only only su four times super effective uh, Pokemon against the Colossal and was not even yeah. brought to the match. Bingy really showing that you can take out the Colossal scenes even without what you would consider the normal Colossal counters. The Regieleki uh, being able to do so well in that game one, not even allowing Orlando to make any use of his Colossal turns. And then mm -hmm. just baiting the, the Volcolith into it in game two, allowing that slow play of the Yawn to try and put it to sleep so the Celesteela could position itself uh, into a position where it could sweep because you wouldn't think of Celesteela as a colossal counter as it is going to be weak to that Max Flare that could come out but saving it in the back waiting for the Dynamax to go from the colossal and being able to come in and just completely clean up with the Celesteela really nice play coming out from Bingchi. So, real question, uh, real quick question, should I say, Jamie? Um, do you think the switch out of the Celesteela, of oh, sorry, the colossal in around I think turn two or turn three there? Um, uh, was a good idea from Orlando. Like, I mean, I could completely understand wanting to avoid uh, the plus two boost uh, to the Celesteela if it was able to go ahead and get that meteor beam off onto that target, which Benji did actually target down. But do you think it might have been maybe worth the miss somehow? and try to get the first turn wait the next turn in that situation Bing bingy had orlando in somewhat of a pin there because if you do leave the colossal in uh, you do get rid of one of those turns that it can so it would be able to wake up the next turn and then you then you if you're switching out you'd have to take that guaranteed turn at some point but at the same time if you do stay in like you said uh, the celestia if it picks up the ko on the colossal get the beast boost as well as the charging turn boost from the meteor beam so it would be sitting at plus two so it's kind of a lose-lose situation for orlando i think that bingy just managed to play those first two turns correctly, especially with that Yawn positioning it so the, the Colossal couldn't attack the Celesteela that turn was yeah. the only turn that was necessary so that Celesteela could set itself up and then just plow through the rest of Orlando's team. And that is what we saw. GG's to both players. Absolutely uh, hyped match to see for game one of the stream today. Uh, as, of course, Binji will be going ahead and progressing into the top eight, which will be streamed live here on Victory Road, of course, as always, tomorrow, ladies and gents. So if you want to see more action from Binji's Sylveon and the Celesteela, don't worry. There's definitely going to be tomorrow. But GG's as well to Orlando. Very well played. You can see that he's just working off of a very solid core that he feels very familiar with and it's just i feel like like you said Binji just had his matchup well prepared in that scenario yeah you could see that he knew what he was doing by the fact that mama swine didn't even come to the game and being able to win with no true natural counters to colossal but really really yeah. well played we're going to be cutting to a short break and we will be right back with the next top 16 match in this spring series grand finals <laughs> 